Hey guys, welcome back. I've got a fun video today. If you're looking for the Manny on my left, my left, my right hand, <laughs> it'll be up in the cards for you. On my left hand today, I'm gonna do something a little controversial. And I say it's controversial because I feel like people have super strong opinions and feelings about candy corn. That's right, I'm talking about candy corn. I myself, at the risk of being hated <laughs> for saying this, I'm not a fan of candy corn. Never have been. I'm assuming I never will be. It's just not my jam. I'm more definitely into chocolate stuff, Almond Joy, Snickers, Milky Way Dark. That's probably my favorite of all the chocolates. But I also am into Sour Patch, anything. Uh, I'm a fan of gummies. Anything gummy, I'll eat. Candy corns, though? I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what they taste like. I wouldn't even know how to describe a flavor of a candy corn. I don't understand. You'll have to comment down below and let me know if you are pro or anti candy corn. Let's keep it civilized. We don't need to argue about it in the comments. I know this is a heated topic. Of course, this is all BS. I'm not serious about any of this, but I know some of you might be. Um, let me know your stance on the candy corn. Um, and on the candy corn, other stuff, because my daughter, Mia, my little one, had this obsession with not the candy corn proper, but like the candy corn pumpkins. I don't know. For one whole year, that's all she wanted. I'm going to get into the Manny, just so you guys know. This is a color block. I'm doing a color block. I'm not using any tape or anything. It's just going to be a super quick, super simple color block. And um, I'm going to make sure it looks nice and clean and tidy later. We'll put some line work on it. It'll be a little bit abstract, but this is a super simple way of doing a color block. It's not overcomplicated. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm literally just dipping in at a little bit of an angle. I'm going to do that with three colors, the orange, the red, and the white. And the kicker, kind of like in a French mani, where you, when you go in to do your second dip of the French, you have to line it up perfectly the way you did the first time. Same deal with this. So I'm going to do a whole first coat, first layer, first dip, what have you. And then I'm going to do it all over again, repeat the same thing. I'm going to line that up exactly like I did for the first one. This it may be, an, again, an unpopular way of doing a color block. I know you can get this very, very precise if you want to put down striping tape and stuff like that. And you're welcome to. If you, I will leave a video up in the cards for you guys of how I did the color block technique with, um, with tape. Not striping tape. That stuff is terrible. I used, like, painter's tape. And it was fine. You can use any tape you want. This is just kind of the lazy way of doing it. And again, I... My MO always with these videos is to show you guys how to do stuff in what I feel might be the simplest way possible. That's my MO because I know that for me at least, if I watch a video and it just looks super complicated, you lost me. You lost me. I'm probably not going to do it or I'm going to try and find a simpler way to do it because um, I don't, I don't want to spend six hours trying to do my nails. I mean, I like the me time. I like sitting at my nail desk and doing my thing you know, and it's good. It's good that you take the time for yourself, but I got other stuff I got to do. <laughs> Y'all know I'm a full-time student. I have three kids, five cats, the house, the things, the stuff. I don't have time to sit at my nail desk all damn day and figure out a freaking mani. I'm just going to do it my way. I'm going to do it a simple way. So that's the color block. I'm going to encapsulate the whole thing in clear and get this nail out of the way. And then I'm going to go real simple on my other nails. I'm going to throw in a black accent nail, which you might be thinking I'm nuts for doing, but I promise you it's all going to come together in the end. Um, let me know if you guys have done Halloween manis yet. If you have, let me know what you've done and let me know what you want to see because I am still filming Halloween manis. I am pre-recorded, I think, for two weeks into October. And I do have plans, but plans can be changed. Nothing is set in stone. So if there is something specific that you guys are wanting to see going forward for the rest of the month of October, definitely comment down below and let me know. And if you are new here, hi, hello, I am Marla Chris, and this is what I do. I am not a nail tech, I'm not a nail professional, I'm not a nail anything, I'm just a DIYer. And I've learned some stuff over the last couple of years, dipping and doing my nails and all this nonsense. So I'm just taking what I've learned and what I've experienced and sharing it with you guys. You don't have to like me. 
I won't be offended. <laughs> but if you do and you feel like you want to stick around and watch some more of my content, definitely give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Um, YouTube has been kind of weird lately with not putting videos into subscriber feeds. So make sure you click your notification bell if you want to see future uploads. For those of you who have been around for a while, I, I will tell you that I believe after October, going into November, I'm going to be taking it down a notch. I'm only going to be uploading twice a week because I know I've been nuts for the last few months. <laughs> and um, I love doing my nails as often as possible, but I tend to get anxious and stressed out when I feel like I'm not filmed ahead as much as I want to be. Like the last thing I want to do is wake up one day and it's an upload day and I'm like, crap, I didn't upload a video, you know? And it, I don't want to stress out. So I'm going to take it down a notch. I figured also with the holidays, God, the holidays, with the holidays coming, you know, everyone's going to be doing their own things. No one has the time to sit and watch 14 uploads a week from one person. And I get it. I totally do. I myself am the same way. So starting November forward until I say otherwise, you'll get two videos, Mondays and Thursdays, my regular, my OG upload days. Um, I may throw a bonus video in for you guys here and there, but that's the schedule I'm going to be sticking to. Uh, I gave you a mouthful just now, didn't I? I apologize. Or you're welcome. If you like hearing me yap, then it's my pleasure. <laughs> I'm going to let you guys watch me get my basic dip on. That was the only technique I'm showing you in this video is the color block. Everything else is super simple, super basic. I will be going in with a little bit of gel polish to accent those color blocks on the color block nail, but that'll be a little bit later. So stick around, hang out. You can watch my normal dip application. I will leave a link in the cards for a very basic dip application that is super beginner friendly. It's a talk through. I'm going to go step by step with you in your first dip. So I'll leave that up there for you guys if you're interested. So you may remember from the last video that I did, the first of the Halloween videos, I mentioned something to you guys about ghost stories and how if you wanted to maybe share your ghost stories with me so I can share them with the rest of the Manny fam, just send them over to my Gmail. I'll leave it up on the screen for you and it'll be in my description box if you would like to send me your ghost stories. But I did want to kick off the holiday season, <laughs> the Halloween holiday season with a ghost story of my own. Um, I don't know how serious this is. It's really not very, it's not heavy. It's not anything. There are no like dead pets involved or family members or anything like that. But I did have a weird experience and I figured it might be good to jump in. So to set the scene for you guys, most of you probably know I was raised in New York on Long Island. Now, if you're from the area, then you have probably heard of the Kings Park Psych Center. Um, basically, this was a psychiatric facility for a very long time. It closed down, I believe, sometime in the 80s, and it was a gigantic compound. There were um, at least seven or eight giant buildings in this big, I don't know what, it was like a community, and it was abandoned. There was nothing there, but the buildings were still there. You know, it was all condemned and everything. But being a stupid kid back in the 90s, uh, me and a bunch of my friends used to run around that place, do dumb things, <laughs> you know, try to find escaped, you know, mental patients <laughs> or something. I don't know what. And um, so we hung out there a lot when I was a kid. Um, I don't think I went back there for probably close to like 10 or 15 years. And then later on as an adult, still living in New York, I decided I wanted to go back. So I went back. You know, this time I actually took a car. <laughs> I didn't walk up the street. And, you know, at this point, they had already started transforming the whole compound. The buildings were all still there. I believe most of them have been torn down since then. But the buildings at this time were all still there. A few have been converted into different things. Like I know there was an office building of some sort. I don't know. I don't know what. I wasn't exploring you know, buildings that were inhabited or being used, just the ba the vacant ones. So I went up to a few of these buildings, went in if I could. I wasn't trying to do anything super illegal. I wasn't like trespassing or anything. I followed the rules, but I got a weird vibe. I don't know if any of you can relate to this, but it was almost that feeling of having an emotion that you know is not yours. 
you know? It was super weird, super eerie. That was the only thing that I felt there. So I hung out there for a little bit, eventually went home, and I was sitting in my kitchen later on that night. Now, in my old house in New York, the kitchen was in the back of the house, and the back of the house was the main entrance because we had a really long driveway going up the side of the house and then winding around in the back. Um, so we parked the car. I parked the car in the back. It was like a parking lot, if you will. <laughs> giant, giant driveway and parking area. And then you'd walk in through the back door. So you walk in the back door. My kitchen's right there. And towards the entryway from the kitchen into the living room, I had a little computer area. So I'm sitting at my computer and I, if I look to my right, I could see the back door. You know, it was only maybe 30 feet away. So I'm on my computer doing whatever I was doing. I was probably like either on Facebook or Pinterest or some kind of crap. And my back door opened. Now, mind you, it's late at night. This is an old house. The house was built, I believe, in like the 1930s. It was a super old house. And the doors in the house required a little bit of force to open and shut. You know, it was a super old house. This door just opened for no reason whatsoever. And I look at the door. I look around. There's nobody there. I didn't know what to think. So after a few minutes of me just being silent and waiting for something to happen, <laughs> and forgive my language, I'm going to cuss. I'm sorry, guys. Earmuffs for the little ones if they're listening. I looked over at the door and I said, would you at least close the fucking door? <laughs> me being the ass that I am. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, that door slammed shut. I kind of stood there with my mouth open for a little bit. I don't even know how much time passed, to be perfectly honest, but nothing else happened. That was it. I have no idea what was there, if anything was there, if there was something, what it wanted. No idea. Never had an experience like that since. Um, I do, especially now, um, over the last few years, I've gotten more sensitive to stuff. I don't know if that's something that develops with age, <laughs> benefits of getting older, but that was certainly an experience I had no explanation for. You guys are going to have to let me know if you've had similar experiences. Comment down below and let me know. Um, this is actually inspired by Robert Welsh. She's a pro MUA here on YouTube. I will link his channel for you in the description box. Every Monday, he does makeup and ghost stories. So pretty much the same thing I'm doing right now, but he does a makeup look. And he and his brother, um, they do read their subscribers ghost stories. And it's absolutely amazing. Some of these stories are just insane and literally send chills up and down my entire spine. I love them to pieces and I'm so excited to do this here for you guys. I don't know if it'll be a permanent thing. I'll see how many of you guys send me emails. I am carrying on with my little Manny here. And again, this was a Manny inspired by the candy corn. I don't know. I don't want to call it a crisis. Conundrum? Mm. <laughs> the candy corn uh, conflict. Let's call it that. The candy corn conflict. I There was a post up in my Facebook group. The link for my Facebook group will be in the description box in case you are not a part of it yet and you would like to be. Um, but there was a post that went up in my Facebook group. I'm not sure if I put it up or if one of my moderators put it up. But essentially, it was, if 2020 was a Halloween candy, what would it be? And two were overwhelmingly the majority on this thread. One of them was black licorice. I think that was mine. <laughs> I don't know who likes this stuff. I know there are some of you that do, and I apologize. I don't need to be offensive in any way, shape, or form. With black licorice Blech. <laughs> and the other one was candy corn and I'm like oh and it was a kind of a heated discussion a little bit people were like either absolutely passionate and love the candy corn or passionately hate the candy corn which led me to this type decision I'm like it's a candy corn conflict I can't wait to hear what you guys think <laughs> about the candy corn as you can see I'm gonna get into some filing and buffing I'm gonna let you guys zone out and watch the filing and the buffing and all the fun stuff. And we're gonna do a teeny tiny little bit of gel. And again, this is something that you don't need to use gel for. I'm gonna get into it a little bit later when we talk about the detail line work or whatever on the actual candy corn color block. But I'm gonna let you guys watch for a little bit and I will come right back.
I finished up all my filing, e-filing. I did buff my nails with my Tammy Taylor buffing block. That thing is amazing. Super expensive, but super awesome. I'm de-dusting now with my alcohol prep pads. And I'm going to get into the art, quote unquote. This was something that, again, was highly, highly requested. And I'm going to play more with this stuff. You're going to see me have a total, we're going to call it a Marla moment, <laughs> where I just don't know what I'm doing hilarious. This is spider gel. And I wanted to do some lines to accent that color block, you know, just going in the same direction as the color block is. So I'm going into the spider gel. Uh, I know you can use liquid latex around your skin and stuff. I did not, but this was the funny part. I'm grabbing a little bit of the spider gel. Now I've seen people use this stuff and this was just not the way I ever saw it going and I'm like I gotta be doing something wrong maybe this product is not good and then I realized <laughs> you're gonna see here in a minute apparently there was like an air bubble or something in the product itself and it left just a film on top of the black product and then I popped accidentally this air bubble and got to the actual product that was in the pot and I worked out much better <laughs> but I'm like is this really the way it goes I don't I don't like it <laughs> and you're gonna see it is a little bit of a mess it's a little messy we're gonna get a little bit messy but it does clean up super easy now you don't have to use spider gel you don't have to use gel this could be done easily with a dotting tool or with a striper brush and you can use um, gel polish if you want you can use regular polish you can use acrylic paint anything that you want to use. I just I happen to have a spider gel for a hot minute and I haven't used it yet and I keep getting requests to play with it. I had no idea how I was going to do that. See, now I got it working. Now it's good. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Don't mind me. But this is why I wanted to show you guys that because I still have so many people thinking they're doing something wrong and it, it may not be that. It may be an issue with the product, an issue with the technique, an issue with, you know, something stupid like this where I didn't realize there was an air bubble inside of this thing. <laughs> so if, don't get discouraged. Just keep trying and eventually you're going to figure it out. If I can do this, you can do this. So I'm going to keep going with my spider gel. I'm going to let you guys watch, but I'll be back with you guys for some final thoughts. So it does clean up super easy, but it does make a little bit of a mess. So if you're not into making a mess with your product, you may want to consider using the liquid latex. I'm just not that person. Yeah, I never had been. I don't like it. It reminds me of snot. I don't like it. You do have to cure the spider gel. I cured it by itself for 30 seconds. And now I'm going in with my no wipe top coat. I'm going to top coat all of my nails. I'm going to let you guys watch, but I'll be back with my final thoughts.
So I've gotten all my nails top coated, cured for a full minute, and this is the final result of the Manny. I freaking love it. I love it to death. Um, I love this 110% more than I love actual candy corns. I will take this over a candy corn any day. <laughs> I'm going to go in with my cuticle oil from Candy Skincare. This was um, caramel apple. It's one of the scents that was in her fall trio. Oh my God. It's so sweet, so delicious smelling. This is another one that I wish I could eat, but CJ would yell at me, <laughs> so I won't. But I will sniff it all day long. It just, it's caramel. Like I was expecting, just from the way it smells, I was expecting my nails to be sticky. They weren't, they were completely fine, but it just smells just like that caramely goodness. I love it so much. Let me know what you guys think of this Manny. Let me know your position on candy corn and definitely shoot me an email if you have a ghost story you'd like to share. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I will catch you in my next one. Love you. Bye.